So I was hoping to have a little bit of music playing while we started, but of technical problems, we couldn't get it working. Um, so um, I was going to ask you a question, but obviously you've not heard the music, so you can't answer the question. I was going to ask you to guess the genre of music. Um, so I, I was going to play some lo-fi music. Um, anybody heard of lo-fi genre? Yeah. OK. So I, I kind of came across it recently. This is the, this kind of the image and the, the podcast down the bottom was where I kind of picked it up. Um, and I want to talk a little about fidelity today. But the interesting, when I kind of looked up at what the actual definition of, of lo-fi was, um, the interesting thing that jumped out at me is, is the bit about um, elements usually regarded as imperfections in the context of recording a performance are present, sometimes as a deliberate choice. So in lo-fi music, we're not trying to be perfect. We're actually kind of intentionally keeping some things wrong in there um, because that's part of the aesthetic. Um, and I think we can take that idea to Agile, it's like, how do we build things? Sometimes we're deliberately making choices to be less than perfect in order to get faster feedback, so in order to give us learning. Um, so that's kind of why, why I talk about fidelity. So this is based on a blog post I wrote kind of about 10 years ago. Um, it's one of those ones that kind of keeps coming back to me and people come up and talk to me about it, and it's one I never did a conference presentation about. So I thought, I, you know, this would be maybe a good time to try and fix that. So, you know, what is fidelity? Um, we've kind of got the, the, the iron triangle. Everybody's familiar with the iron triangle. You know, and we've got these constraints in there, um, and we know that that reduces the flexibility of what we can do. Um, and typically, we talk about scope, time, cost. Um, and, you know, quality is actually something that we don't negotiate. Um, except that we probably all know that quality is the first thing to, to, to get negotiated and cut down on um, because we've got to hit the date and we can't increase cost and, and we've got to hit the scope as well. Um, but I think fidelity gives us a way of answering this. And actually, fidelity is kind of what Agile brings um, that really differentiates it from the different, different ways of working. Um, and, and partly, it's differentiating fidelity from scope. And I also kind of, fidelity is not quality. Be, you know, when I say let's build a low fidelity solution, I'm not saying let's produce something that's really crap, that's really low quality. We can still have something that's high quality. Low fidelity music is still kind of really good music. It's just got these imperfections by choice in it. Um, but also, um, I kind of think if we can separate out, separate out the ideas of scope and fidelity, we can still talk about meeting scope. And by scope, I'm defining in terms of the, the outcomes that we want to achieve, um, the needs, people's needs that we want to meet, the value we want to deliver. And then fidelity is more about how are we going to implement that scope. So what, what level of sophistication is, is our solution going to have? How much precision are we going to be in there? How much are we going to polish it? And that means we can start with something that's low fidelity, that meets the scope, and start building fidelity up. So that means, and I think I'm kind of uh, going out on a limb here, I think we talk about you can't have all things in the iron triangle. I think you can. I think Agile allows us to do that because you can fix scope, time, cost, and quality. Uh, and I kind of put reasonably in there because if somebody says I want everything by tomorrow, that's probably not reasonable. Um, but you can fix that, and fidelity gives you a, a lever and a dimension to start playing around with that and actually hit the date, hit the scope, hit the cost and an acceptable level of quality. So let's kind of get into that a little bit in more detail. So kind of high level introduction of fidelity there. Um, everybody heard the spy skills question? Everybody know the spy skills question? A few people? Tell me what you want. OK, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tell you what you want, what you really, really want. So this is this, is this idea of focusing and prioritizing and kind of, you know, let's, you can't have everything. Um, great question. Um, I quite often find, though, that people give what I call the queen answer. OK, you're right. Who knows what the queen answer is? Yeah, well done, well done. Queen fans in the room. Yeah, I want it all, I want it all. I want it all, and I want it now. <laughs> so how do we kind of help people uh, answer the Spice Girls question with the queen answer with fidelity? Um, so Another way of looking at the Iron Triangle is, is basically a burn down. So I was at a conference in Zurich, and Ken Schwaber used a variation of this slide. It was kind of, sort of like, it was like, oh, yeah, I hadn't thought about it that way. But you know, a burn down has scope on one axis. You have time on the other. And then you've got the slope. And effectively, the, the, the line of the slope is a, is a function of cost and quality. So 
I was chatting about this with, with a couple of guys, Joseph Pellerin and, and Keith Braithwaite, people know them. We were, I think this was probably a pub conversation in the evening. Um, uh, and, and talking about this idea of, of how, do you, how, do you kind of, how do you use this idea. Um, so we all know kind of Brooks Law, adding people to a late project, a uh, software project makes it later. So actually cost, you can't really play around with cost. Um, unless you're doing it early, but if you're trying to kind of make that burn down steeper by, by ad throwing money at it, probably it's not going to work. So that kind of rules that one out. And then quality, um, well, quality notionally we talk about, you know, you, if you start cutting quality, um, you, one, you don't want to do that, but probably it's going to make things worse anyway. Now, interestingly, and I'm going to coin something that I'm going to call Braithwaite's law. So Keith Braithwaite, talked about this. He actually kind of hypothesized that actually um, you can affect the slope of this, but actually if you increase quality, you can increase velocity. Um, but that's kind of quite a, quite a hard thing for people to want to get their heads around. It's like, I, I spend more time writing tests and, and, and I get my software delivered quickly. Surely I need to spend less time writing tests to get my software delivered more quickly. Um, so you can influence with quality, it's just not in the way we expect. But I think actually there's the, the, the this fidelity is basically the third bit of this equation. Um, the slope of that line is a function of cost, quality, and fidelity. Uh, and I'm, I'm not claiming that this is like an original idea. So uh, a couple of guys um, in Belgium, I think, had kind of come up with this idea of dimensional planning. So that they, they basically use this to talk about scope and negotiate scope. When we're building a solution, what sort of solution do you want? Do you want a dirt road solution? So that's the, like the really basic solution. It's the absolute minimal thing, but it'll do the job. A like dirt road will get you from A to B. But it's kind of a bit dirty, it's gonna get muddy. Um, but hey, at least we can now learn, do people wanna get from A to B? So if people never even use the dirt road, they're probably never gonna use a, 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 a better road. And then you've kind of got the cobble road. It's better, it's not gonna get so flooded and muddy. Um, it's adequate, but it could be better. And then you've got the highway. This is like the best possible solution. It's like a kind of real luxury. You can really get a smooth drive, drive, get there really, really quickly. So we can have conversations and negotiate. What, what, what level of solution would be? What would, a, what would a dirt road solution look like? What would a cobble road solution look like? What would a highway solution look like? And basically, those are three different levels of fidelity. So the dirt road solution is low fidelity, and the highway is the highest level of fidelity. So that's, that's what fidelity is. So what? What's that got to do with Agile? I think this helps us understand the difference between incrementing work and iterating on work. So, set of, set of more, more graphs, more uh, um, visualizations. So let's say we've got architecture on one axis, we've got scope on the other axis. Uh, let's, let's visualize what a big bang delivery, like the old fashioned, let's call it waterfall. Um, basically, you build slices of the architecture one by one, that, uh, that's not showing very well on this projector, is it? Can people just about make out those really light grey bands? Um, so there's different bands of architecture there that we're building out. And once we've built them all, we just integrate it all together. And you've got the whole system. Perfect. Anybody still working this way? OK. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that, so, so that's just kind of one way of looking at it. Incremental development actually is, is trying to build things by scope. So let's kind of call these things features. We can actually then build out one feature at a time. Can you see that at all? So these are kind of getting slightly, okay, first time I've given this talk, I need to update the colors on this. Kind of building out each of these one at a time. So that's incrementing. You build, basically you're building all of the scope, and I would say you're building all of the scope to a defined level of like high fidelity on the assumption that once you've got all the scope, you've got all the project. So there's no learning involved there. You're not really getting any feedback. All you're doing is potentially being able to go to market a little bit sooner with less scope. So it gives you a bit of flexibility of scope, but not that much. Iterative development. Um, this really isn't going to work. So what I've got here. See, these, these slices are a lot thinner. So we're kind of building out all the scope, but just a little bit of the scope. So we're building each bit of scope at a really low fidelity, and then we can go back and build out a little bit more. So that's just iterative development. What Agile gives us 
is incremental and iterative development. I think people focus on the incremental bit of Agile and they're kind of missing a trick with the iterative bit. And they think iteration is just your process, because we call them iterations. All you're doing is iterating on the process. But you shouldn't be, and, and I'm going to see Patik in the room. Patik was kind of talking about this at his session yesterday. You need to iterate on your product, because that's how you get the feedback. And that's how we get these really thin slices of feedback. So what you're really doing here, you might do a few small slices, low fidelity of some of the solution, but you're not doing all of it, just maybe the bits that get you enough feedback. And then you might go back and, and build out that one to a little bit higher fidelity to kind of get some more learning. You might build out that one to a little bit higher level of fidelity. This one actually is kind of really important, so we're going to build that one out to full fidelity. Um, and then we'll build out that one. I'm going to build out that one. And so on. So you start building out each bit of scope, each need, slowly increasing the fidelity. Then maybe we kind of go out and add a few more features at a low fidelity because we're kind of what we've got is good enough. And then we're going to go back. So you're kind of jumping around a bit, deciding where, can we, where do we next want feedback? Where can we next get value? So to me, that's agile. It's the incrementing and the iterating. And fidelity is the thing that gives you that ability to iterate. So agile involves both incrementing and iterating. And you're iterating from low fidelity to high fidelity. So it's not quality. It's not just about um, you know um, starting starting small and maybe making something a little bit bigger. It's actually how can we build something really basic, get that feedback, get that learning, figure out what to do next, or maybe decide that we shouldn't be building something in the first place because because that low fidelity solution kind of tells us that what we're building is the wrong thing. All right. So so how can you use that? What sort of techniques can we use? Already talked about dimensional planning. So you know that's a really easy one. Just start talking about in terms of what level of solution. We've got three levels of solution. Do we want a dirt road, a cobble road, or a highway? You know, can we get away? Should we just build a dirt road solution first? What would that look like? So that's kind of the first easy way of doing it. And then you've got something called, has people heard of feature injection? So this is kind of a Chris Matz thing, if people know Chris. Um, but I think of it as, as slicing at every level of your um, of your product or your business. So you start off with, with a vision. Um, in order to meet that vision, you're going to have some goals. For each goal, you're going to have some capabilities that you need to build. To, to achieve those capabilities, you're going to develop features. Um, each of those features will have a number of scenarios. And then for each scenario, eventually, you can start writing stories. So you're gradually kind of building down the detail. What feature injection says is, don't go and write all your stories for the whole solution up front but inject those stories. Uh, and actually, what you do is pick a goal. Which goal do we want to work on? Let's, which is kind of the most important goal? For that goal, what's the lowest level capability that we might build or achieve to, um, to meet that goal? And then for that low fidelity capability, what low fidelity feature is going to help us get towards having that capability? Then what low fidelity scenario is going to help us explore the feature? And then that gets you down to, OK, what small stories are going to create feedback for that scenario? So you're kind of drilling down and in, in injecting this, the, the work effectively. And then as you inject, you effectively inject all the stories until you've got enough stories to have a good enough scenario. And then you might kind of pick another scenario, and then you inject stories. And then eventually, you've injected enough stories for that feature. OK, you only pick another feature and start injecting scenarios and injecting, injecting stories. So it gives us a way of kind of thinking about how do we decide what stories to work um, and start building up from low fidelity through to high fidelity. Once you've got enough fidel low fidelity, you might kind of go back and start injecting stories for an existing feature, but for a higher, higher level fidelity scenario or higher level fidelity features. Um, the other useful technique, I think, for the, that works with this um, is user story mapping. People familiar with user story mapping? So um, basically a, a, a two-dimensional backlog. So adding some context around the backlog um, where you've kind of visualizing your goals and your users. But the main thing is you've got this, uh, the big story at the top and the timeline of, of how our users are interacting with your system. That's kind of the, the horizontal direction. And then down the, um, the vertical direction, you have levels of detail. So the way I think of that, actually, then, is um, 
So Jeff Patton talks about priority. I think of it in terms of fidelity. So the things at the top are the things you build out to build that low level, that low fidelity solution. And then as you move things down um, and start building out features, um, effectively going back to that idea of feature injection, that's how you show what feature you, might you inject into your system later on as you want to build up fidelity. So I think the idea of feature, in, feature injection and story mapping kind of go together. You tweak some of the language around user story mapping. Um, but you then can visualize your visions, your goals, your capabilities, your features, your stories, and then those stories um, ordered by fidelity. And then you can kind of take that walking skeleton across the top. That's effectively your low level, your low fidelity solution. And that, um, that, first, that walking skeleton effectively then becomes your first release. So that's your first low fidelity release. And then the other idea for Jeff Patton, um, and he, he, I don't think he's talked about this a lot, um, so I can't remember where I picked it up from, but I had to kind of go back and, and um, use my Google foo. And I, I found this article on Sticky Minds where he kind of makes a, makes a passing reference to it. The idea of grading features, so he calls it a feature report card. So as you're building out features, grade it. What, and effectively by grading, you're, kind of you're grading by fidelity. So an A grade. This feature is an A grade. It's the best, best possible feature we could have. That's your highest level fidelity. Uh, an F is your lowest fidelity. So you might start and build an F. What you're doing here is recognizing this is a low fidelity solution, but it's not the end solution. And what you can do, oh, again, this isn't showing up on here. Um, you can decide for each feature or each piece of scope, what level of fidelity do we want to get it to? Because not everything needs to be grade A. Now you're going to have your like your key differentiation features, the things that are really attract your customers. You're going to need some things grade A, but some things maybe just need to be a grade C. So, in advance, having a conversation about what level of fidelity might we want each feature to be in the finished product doesn't everything doesn't have to be an A. And then as you're developing features, talking about well, what level of fidelity now? What what grading is this feature getting now? And at what point should we start developing? Because it's got to a C, and we said we only needed to be C. This other thing, we want to be an A, and it's only a B. So let's work on getting this one from a B to an A. So it gives you a way of talking about what the level of fidelity of solution is. Um, hopefully, if you, I'll make the slides available for download, and this will show up a little bit better. Um, or just so you appear at my laptop here. <laughs> um, or gather around the laptop. Um, so. I'm um, kind of wrapping up a little bit. Hopefully I have some time for questions. We want to take that iron triangle of scope, time, cost, and quality and kind of bring that fidelity into it as this kind of, I could call it the lost dimensions. Like there's somebody nobody talks about, but it's there hiding in the background. You just need to kind of turn around and look at it. So I, I, I find it really useful. Um, and it's, it's the way I talk to customers about slice, story slicing is like start with a low fidelity and build up the fidelity. Um, and there's, there's, there's basically kind of three things I've talked about there. So, you know, three things you can go about and think about how would you do this. The first one is actually just grade your features. And I'm taking your know, features generically, but whatever you call them, grade them by fidelity. Um, so what fidelity do you want them to be? What fidelity are they now? And that's going to help you understand some of the work you need to do. Inject stories by fidelity. So if you want to increase something from a, you know, a B, sorry, C to a B, then start injecting stories one by one to help move that grade and then slice your releases by fidelity figure out what's that walking skeleton so what level of grades across all our features do we want to get to for that first release and then each release slowly builds up that fidelity across all your features and that's that's how we kind of get that iteration that's how we get that learning and feedback and to me that's the that's kind of the magic of agile that, that sometimes get lost behind all the process um, these are the, the blog posts, yeah, 2009, I first, uh, was, I first wrote about this. The first two kind of uh, the original blog posts where most of this content put a little bonus one in there, um, which was about um, kind of re releasing regularly. But if you're, if you're building by fidelity and you can kind of slowly building up your system by fidelity, you can then start releasing much more often. And there's obviously a huge amount of benefits to do with that. Um, that's probably another talk. So I um, wanted, <laughs> wanted to finish with a quote. I thought, all right, I'll, I'll just Google for quotes about fidelity. 
Um, and basically they're all about either about fidelity, the business, the financial business, or fidelity, marriage and faithfulness. Which is interesting because actually what we're kind of talking about fidelity is there's that how faithful is the solution to what we want it to be. And as we increase the fidelity, it's getting closer to what we want it to be. Um, anyway, this Lily Palmer, she's a German actress. I'd never heard of her. Has anybody have heard of her? No. So, uh, uh, but she has, has had this quote. Um, Fidelity is a gift, not a requirement. I think she's talking about marriage or, you know, being faithful to your partner. Um, and I think she's saying, um, you know, you, you don't have to be faithful, but it's probably a really good idea. <laughs> you know, take it as a gift. Um, but, you know, just the idea, I think, I think you could spin that a little bit about fidelity the way I've been talking about it. It's a gift. It's like we know about it, we can use it, we can benefit from it. You don't have to do it, but also it's not about just hitting requirements. Agile is not just taking requirements where stories are just requirements in disguise and incrementing on them. Let's, let's iterate on those things, iterate on the scope, iterate on the value, so that we can really achieve outcomes, start learning, learning, getting that feedback, meet our customers' needs. Um, OK, I thought I'd swap these around. Lean Agile Brighton, I'm wearing a T-shirt. It's in October. Um, this is a little kind of uh, advert break. Um, there's some early bird tickets left. There's a discount code for you. Please buy tickets. Come to, come to October. Um, Gabby in the room. Gabby's coming down. Dan North's coming down. Uh, he's coming. Uh, Julie. Julia. Sorry. Brain, brain freeze. Um, and some other people, speakers, and other speakers that are not here as well. So you're not just going to get the same old content again. <laughs> um, thank you.